So here we are on step three, establishing your next target condition. So here's what you're trying to do, and that is to describe what you're striving for next. It's how you want the focus process to be operating in the near future and in the direction of the challenge. The target condition is agreed upon between the learner and the coach. The learner develops a target condition through back and forth dialogue with the coach, maybe a little negotiation, and it's an iterative process. But the key thing for me is, at this moment in time, you have the opportunity to create an environment where the learner can increase their self-efficacy. Because when it's all said and done, we want people to increase their confidence in facing challenges, overcoming obstacles, and achieving successful outcomes. If the target condition is set too easy, then there's no learning. If the target condition is set too hard, then the effort to improve may come to a stop. People may give up. Once the uh, outcome performance and the date is agreed upon between the learner and the coach, it's locked in place. This is important because it causes you to think a little bit more carefully about understanding current condition, about setting the target condition, about being persistent <laughs> and innovative and working on those obstacles, and it really sends the message that what you're working on is important. I'm laughing because years ago, Massa B gave me a persistence award, and I really didn't know what that was about. So anyway, the deal is, if you don't hit that achieve by, I'm sorry, if you don't hit that agreed upon target condition, it's OK, because you're still learning along the way. So step three is the last step in the planning phases. At this point, you understand the uh, direction and the challenge, and that's the framework that the target condition sits in. You have analyzed the current condition through direct observation and measurement. You've set your next target condition. The power of these three planning phases is that it is a countermeasure to the natural tendency of the human brain to quickly fill in for missing information. So good planning gives you good results. It prevents you from jumping to conclusions, from quickly implementing preconceived ideas, does that ever happen, and from rushing to step four. So what is a target condition? A target condition describes the desired future. It's a set of circumstances that go beyond your current knowledge threshold, <clears throat> meaning you don't know how to get there. But it is a manageable stretch that you can, in fact, achieve. And through that stretch, you will build your creative capabilities, which is really ultimately your ability to improve and to innovate. You only have to describe and define one target condition at a time. In other words, you don't have to lay out a whole series of target conditions like a roadmap in advance. So that's the great news. We don't have to jump and solve complex issues or challenges directly from the current condition. In fact, that approach is quite overwhelming and will stop most people. So why is setting target condition important? If you look at the right-hand side of the slide, it represents a positive, forward-looking mindset, working towards what you want. It mobilizes ingenuity, creativity, and teamwork. Isn't that great? To me, it describes the zone of learning and discovery. So in this process, you discover what you need to work on, what's preventing you, meaning the obstacles, from moving toward the, the uh, target condition by expanding your knowledge threshold. Yes, there are obstacles that are going to be in the way, and we have to experiment around those obstacles, but th that process is going to shed light for how to get to that next target condition. And through that, we're going to reflect on what we're learning in order to establish the next target condition. Working this way uh, gives you the ability to learn and to adjust to that unknown future, unknown reality. And when the target condition is met, you are truly at a new level of performance. There is no backsliding that's going to happen. The left side of this chart, I won't spend a lot of time on because it really represents reacting to problems. I call that the world of frustration, firefighting, and failure. Have you seen it? So when you're putting a target condition together, there are three elements to describe target condition. That's when, what, and how. 
when and what represents the target, how represents the uh, pattern. Um, <clears throat> so when you're describing a target condition, you want to kind of pretend that you're uh, traveling forward in time to the achieved by date. You're looking at that focus process and you're trying to describe what it is you want to see. There are no verbs, planned actions, or solutions. So the when represents the achieved by date. Like I said, it's manageable stretch, but it feels doable. The what represents a numeric outcome performance. So this is a little tricky. We have to find a way to measure what would indicate that the envisioned pattern is truly going to bring us towards that challenge. And finally, the how represents the attributes, patterns, and outcome, and characteristics smoothly, that are changeable. These are the factors that you can work on. When you're describing this pattern, you want to go deep, not broad. You want to describe the focus process with as much detail as possible, and this takes experience, especially when you don't know how to, you're getting to target condition. So the starter kata for establishing target condition has five steps. So in step one, I want to give a cautionary point. You have to make sure that you fully understand the challenge and the, how the process focus that you're working on um, plays a role in that challenge. In step two, the cautionary point is timing matters because it has a big impact on building high efficacy of the learner. In fact, if you have a beginner that you're working with, you may want to have the achieved by date only be one to two weeks out. For step three, the cautionary point is the learner may need help in defining the measurement and linking that measurement to the challenge. I find in my job that is a weak link. In step four, uh, the cautionary point is this requires skills mastery. It requires practice. And in fact, if you're not sure how to describe the pattern, it may indicate that you need to go back and better understand current condition. And finally, start that obstacle parking lot. This is where you start to identify and record on the storyboard what you perceive as obstacles to achieving your target condition, because you're going to start to work on those in step four. So I want to share a personal starter kata. This is not business related. OK, so uh, before I go through those five steps, I got to give you the long-term vision, because it was important to me. And that is, in the next phase of my life, so this is beyond the work I do today in raising a family. I want it to be super fantastic with no limitations. Nice vision, huh? So the challenge that I set for myself in that long-term vision was no limitations due to physical health. So there was a reason why this was picked is because back when I started this, I was not heading in the right direction on this subject, OK? In fact, the starting point was the beginning of 2014 I announced to my husband, this is going to be the year of health whenever we have spare time. <laughs> so I'm wondering, what was the priority of the commitment to that challenge? OK? All right. So the focus process, you could call it body or mind, but specifically, I was focused around nutrition and exercise. OK, so here we go for target condition number one. <laughs> we said there had to be a date. There had to be a what, and there had to be a how. Uh, the date was missing. There was no achieved by date when I started. I think there was two reasons. I didn't have a kata coach when I started this. Secondly, I'm not sure I had the confidence that I could actually be successful. Had never done it my whole life. So who needs a date? <laughs> the performance measure that I started at the beginning of this journey was to lose one pound a week. So that was measurable. And the pattern was to do this naturally, meaning no surgery, no medications, and to do it through healthy choices. So immediately, obstacles began to form in my mind. Here are some highlights. Ah, very limited knowledge of threshold on food and nutrition. Never did I pay attention. Secondly, I don't shop for food or cook. That's up to my husband. Still is. And so I needed to recruit him into this journey. Next, I had very limited mobility at the beginning of 2014. In fact, going down the aisle in a store, uh, my feet were screaming, so I have bad feet. And, second, and fourth, I was out of balance. I knew that. Time and priorities, not so good. So after a year and a half, here's some lessons learned and reflection I want to share with you. One is the achieved by date is really important. There's nothing like having something. In fact, 
the closer on in it is, the better. To achieve successful target conditions over that year and a half, there are some key things I'd like to share. One is it requires really good observations of current condition and the experimenting you're doing. And you have to pay attention to the measures that you have in making decisions along the way. So my starting point was something, just an outcome metric of weight loss every week, every month. By the end of the year and a half, I drove that to what am I looking at hourly and daily? And not just an output metric, but input metrics, process metrics, and I had it all going, okay? Secondly, you need to put things in writing. There's nothing like putting in something in writing. It will help you understand current condition as a learner. It will hold yourself accountable. I hated this, okay? And it improves the coaching cycles that you can get. The next one is that uh, current conditions are always changing. Sometimes you don't even know they're changing on you, especially body and mind. So the bottom line is you have to be ready to be constantly increasing your knowledge threshold. And in fact, that's really great because when the bad news happens, you just have to say to yourself, instead of getting disappointed or frustrated or mad, you just say there's something more to learn. Isn't that great? Reflecting on that year and a half, setting that vision that the improvement kata sits within, and celebrating the successes is really important. They're like powerful bookends. Because when the going gets tough, you got to lean on that vision a little bit. Why the heck am I doing this? <laughs> and when you have successful, even if they're small, you need to celebrate. Selection of obstacles and experiments. When I got honest with myself and started to focus on those things that I could influence is when I made the biggest difference. So that's really important. Uh, to truly make mindset and behavior changes needs practice every day. For me, in this challenge, even though it took place starting in 2014 for a year and a half, um, I'm still there today. Why? Because I have truly gone to a new level of performance through changing mindset and behavior. But that takes daily practice. And finally, coaches are good. No matter who you are, your improvement will level out. But kata coaches are even better. So the results, I mentioned about mobility, couldn't walk down the aisle. Before a year and a half was out, my husband and I hiked to the tallest mountain in Massachusetts. We went to the summit. You can see the details of that hike and the wording for how it describes it. Um, I was proud of that. I didn't tell my husband I could barely walk back to the car. My legs were shaking so bad, but that was a proud moment. In the middle slides, in fact, I'm going to hit this thing so that top slide disappears. Uh, it was really a proud moment also to be standing with the world's best AVA, uh, aerobatic pilot, Sean D. Tucker. Any pilots in the room who know Sean Tucker? He knows my family well. And when he validated the transformation that he saw, boy, that made me feel pretty darn good. Okay, and, second, and third of all, going into a doctor's appointment where the doctor walks in that room with a smile on his face and a clipboard with some good numbers on it, uh, Felt pretty good. He said to me, what are you doing? So a happy doctor equals a happy patient, OK? And uh, the dilemma I have now is that uh, people ask me, how did you do this? And the truth is, I just want to say it was really easy. And in fact, it was awesome. <laughs> I used the improvement kata, OK? But at the same time, I want to tell the truth. It was hard work. And on those difficult days, my husband and I kept saying to each other, we are earning it. So I'm going to conclude by saying improvement kata and coaching kata are a gift from the heart. Put it to use and make a difference in the world. Thank you.